guys the vibe of this year and oh my god trailer 2 just got leaked a bunch of stuff just got leaked we got some exclusive footage on san diego comic con bunch of new characters just got leaked that were in the trailer so in this video so we're gonna be the biggest breakdown i ever done i am gonna have to blur some stuff because some stuff's getting leaked from san diego comic con from some of the people who saw a small clip of Transformers 1. Primarily, what I mean by that, I mean the Iacon 500, the racing contest. A lot of characters appearing in that one. There was a scoreboard that showed all the characters that were there. We saw tons of names. In fact, I, you know, I just throw your bone and confirm two of them. Dead then Modern Master and Silver Bowl, just to name a few. So yeah, um, this is insane. So many crazy stuff's happening, and I'm gonna talk about it right here. So first up, we're gonna start off with the trailer, and then I'll talk about the leak stuff, because that's insane, honestly. But there won't be any Lot of spoilers in this i know i did say i saw the movie and yeah i did saw it here's my poster as proof i was one of the lucky people who got to see the screening but i won't be spoiling like how the movie starts how the movie ends i will hint at some stuff but for the most part i don't want to ruin the experience for people so you are free to watch this video without any major spoilers so let's jump right into it all right so the second trailer starts with basically an explosion in Iacon. This is supposedly caused by Megatron since you do see a figure at the very top of the Matrix monument. Which, yeah, it looks like Megatron starring this. We also see a bunch of Transformers here and like, oh my god, dude, there's there's so many Transformers. In all honesty, I did mention in my previous video the 65 plus characters and those are just the ones I managed to spot and identify. Here we see Charles, like, he was probably the one who shot the monument. We see Transformers running around. We see so many and... They come in so many colors, shapes, and sizes that it's honestly kind of hard to identify them each. Like I said, a lot of these guys could be someone or could probably not be anyone. My guess is that this happens at the point in the movie when, you know, Megatron and Optimus kind of fall apart and, you know, they have their final battle of sorts. We see that Optimus Prime and Megatron kind of have their final battle in Iacon City. So my guess is that this is the start of the final battle. Next up we have here the Matrix Monument glowing. Honestly, not much a deal what this is about. Maybe the Matrix got found. Maybe it has something to do with the Matrix or Iacon City. I highly doubt that Metroplex shows up like some people are suggesting. Everyone's gathered up here and everyone's so colorful. So my guess is that these are probably mostly Autobots with a few seekers thrown in there. Because I still stand by my theory, you know, that Autobots and Decepticons will team up towards the end of the film before maybe, you know, going back to their usual, you know, fighting against one another type of stick. If we have a close up at Optimus Prime and Megatron, now this is a end of movie Optimus and end of movie Megatron, so this will be like their final designs as to how they're gonna look like in the movie. And now this is not a spoiler because Studio Series kind of already leaked Optimus Prime's design, but this will be our close up slash first real look at Megatron. And we'll see him later in the trailer, but he looks glorious. Here we have a close-up of Optimus Prime, really good look at his battle mask. You could have already seen it before in a previous TV spot, but it's nice to like, you know, get to see it once more. Before Megatron rushes in, tries to punch him and then activates his like little... A triple ion cannon? I still don't know what that is. It, it's weird, you know, him having another, you know, type of cannon. But it looks like Optimus Prime and Megatron are gonna be stacking this movie full of powers. Especially because then later, we see Optimus Prime pull a hard rod and use his smoke stacks to create fire? Someone better call Rodimus, he wants his flames back. But in all honesty, this is really cool, really unexpected. Optimus Prime and Megatron will have a variety of powers and abilities in the movie. And honestly, I can't wait to see it. So here we see Optimus Prime and Megatron about to fist bump one another. And like, you know, the trailer is making a point that by this point, they're kind of like brothers, you know, that they are best friends. They look after one another. They kind of go through their everyday lives, you know, just working the mines like, you know, like if they're supposed to. Because everything is building up to that inevitable confrontation of them, two of them falling apart and then becoming the, you know, dreaded enemies that we know them as in the Michael Bay movies. And while we're at it, speaking of the Michael Bay movies, your boy Lorenzo has gone out of his way to confirm that Transformers 1 takes 3 billion years for the events of the live action movies. So yeah, for those of you guys who were saying not, nah, Transformers 1 is his own thing, well, again, Lorenzo just goes on and makes the timeline even harder. Uh, can we get rid of that guy? We have some characters in the background I think most of you guys probably missed. One of them is Jazz. He's very visible here. You can see his iconic uh, blue vertical stripe. We also see Firestar just in front of him. Or it could be someone else. Like, it's very hard to see, especially from a distance. However, we do get another look at Jazz. You can see him right here in the background just behind Orion Pax. There's a lot of Jazz in this trailer, surprisingly enough. But you know what? For those of you guys who begged for Jazz to return in a Transformers movie since 07, it looks like you got your wish granted. Okay, so in this next shot, we see that the trailer is actually doing some, like, edits to try and fool you. For example, 
in this part, we see Megatron is like, you know, trying to distract these two Darkwing lookalikes. I don't think they have any names. And then when it comes to them training D16, and by the way, I'm just saying this right now, I call him D16 or Megatron interchangeably. So just like, you know, ahead of time, it comes to Darkwing, who, you know, you can tell it's Darkwing because he has a different visor. I mean, he's talking down to Lita One. So yeah, it looks like Alita One won't be able to transform in this movie. I mean, we kind of already knew that, kind of already predicted it, but it looks like she's also gonna be, you know, dunning the mines with both D16 and Orion Pax. And it looks like the test screenings were right, because they did keep the middle finger Orion Pax joke. In all honesty, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, yeah, I know there's a very different Orion Pax than what we're used to, but most people are used to the, you know, the kind of quiet Orion Pax on Transformers Prime. This one's a bit more rebellious, so I think it's fine. It. I know some people have a problem with this, but I honestly don't mind that much. Also, something I'm gonna note here is that when you take a look at D16 here, you can see that he has the Decepticon symbol or something that looks approximate in t approximately to it. I don't think the Decepticons are a major faction or a major thing pretty early on in the movie. I think this is indicative of maybe as supposed to be some kind of memoir to the Fallen, you know, Megatron is one of the 13 Primes. And D16 is just wearing his insignia here as, as, as a way to honor the Fallen Prime. We then get this shot of B127, Orion Pax, and D16 looking upon Alpha Triumph's message. So it looks like for the most part, the, the thing about this movie, according to some of the test screenings and stuff like that, is that Sentinel Prime is a false prime. And our main characters are going to be going on a quest to try and find the Primes and the ma mythical Matrix of Leadership. At least that's the plot synopsis we heard from a while back, and it looks like it's becoming more and more true. Also, keep in mind that when you look at Alpha Trion's design here, you can see that he's complete, like he's not Battle Angel. Because next time we see him, you can see that he is, he has a very uneven design in his missing parts. He looks pretty damaged. This seems to happen before whatever happens to him and the other primes in the surface takes place. And here we have a really cool action shot of Starscream transforming and taking out one of the Steve drones. Honestly, in case you haven't noticed. The secret designs in this movie are Bone Movie Movie inspired. So I'm guessing Lorenzo's statement wasn't just for nothing, because I, I think he had that in mind since the beginning. But in all honesty, it looks really cool, and in case you guys want a better look at him, Ben, here's the toy with the vehicle mode CGI. And you're welcome. In this shot, we see what it appears to be the Quintesson ship scanning for Sabaton and life form in the surface, making sure that no one's around. Like, the surface looks really abandoned, like, there's no one goes there. I, I, the first one made that pretty obvious. But on the second trailer, it looks like Quintessons are just actively going across the surface trying to eradicate anyone they see. Maybe they also got into conflict with Starscream's group quite a bit. Since we know from the location of their base, they're also somewhere in the surface. And now here we see the Primes. And yes, I mean plural. I mean, we don't get a good look at all of them. But in the San Diego Comic Con, which got leaked, which I won't be showing here for security reasons, we do get to see all 13 Primes. All 13 Primes have exclusive designs and all of them are in the movie. And for those of you guys who don't know, the 13 Primes was something that was brought to the forefront in Transformers lore to Transformers Prime. They're basically creations of Primus that are, are kind of like demigods that are supposed to protect Cybertron and kind of nurture future generations of Transformers. Those being Onyx Prime, Alpha Trion, Quintus Prime, Alchemist Prime, Solus Prime, Nexus Prime, Megatronus, Prima, Vector Prime, Micronus Prime, Amagamus Prime, and Leech Maximus. We have seen a few of them so far, although granted they are worse for wear, but you're gonna get a clear look at all of them in the movie. And don't worry, I'll talk more about them when I do my inevitable all character video on all the Transformers 1 characters tomorrow. Anyway, so Alpha Trion then gives them the cog so they can transform. Then we get the scene that we already seen before of them being chased by the Steve drones as they're figuring out how to transform. It's actually a pretty fun scene, all things considered. And they actually did kept a lot of the comedy from the first trailer. Because after this, we get the clip of Orion Pack saying, We roll out. And then, you know, the, co the seeker comedically says, What? So they are keeping the comedy, but this trailer is definitely way Way more serious than the first one, and I'm happy about that because that's honestly something that we kind of been asking for. Because yeah, I mean the movie's trying to be funny, and you know it either hits for some people or it doesn't hit for some people. But I really do like and appreciate how much more serious the second trailer is trying to be. You know, it's trying to be serious while still having some levity in it to make the movie fun and entertaining. And we also get our first clear looks at Soundwave and Shockwave here. Like our, you know, they're now just in the side, they're like out right in the center for everyone to see. Now Shockwave here looks fantastic. Um, it has been reported that his vehicle mode is like a weird mix of Follow Sabatron and his Galactic Star Racing 
game interpretation. While Soundwave here, his vehicle mode looks a lot like the one from Studio Series. Now, something I also want to point out, and I found this really interesting. No, I don't think anyone has brought it up yet. Soundwave doesn't have a cassette. If you take a look at his chest, there's nothing there. It's actually empty. You can see there's even some shadow there to like it signify that he doesn't have a cassette yet. So Soundwave might actually be cassetteless in this movie, which is definitely a strange choice, but I guess we'll see. And look, I'll be completely honest, I'm not a big fan of the Soundwave design. It's okay, it's not bad, but I wouldn't call it good either. We also see some secrets in the background, Skywarp, Red Wing. This guy looks like the guy from Armada. I forgot his name, I haven't watched Armada in so long. Then we also get some small dialogues between Orion Pax and D16. Of course, they're like, you know, kind of debating slash fighting each other, talking about, you know, if they could build a new world together instead they're now enemies and they're making things worse. And again, this is just highlighting the inevitable tragedy of the movie, of the two of them separating. And yes, while we know the destination, you know, it's not about how you end, it's about the journey, you know? So I really don't mind this. It's the big plot twist we're all kind of seeing coming, but it's the journey there that's gonna make it fun and, you know, rewarding once we actually see it on screen. Next up, we got this look at Arachnid. As you can see, she has eyes behind her back and then she opens her head up to reveal more eyes? This is a very blinky to miss it moment, but through the reflection, you can see that she's actually looking at Orion Pax. So this probably happens later in the movie once the Autobots, the Sabdacons, you know, team up to fight the Senate forces, as we're calling them. I don't think they have an official name yet, but yeah, you can see that she's looking at Optimus Prime slash Orion Pax with all her eyes for some reason. If, if you guys can think of a good reason why she's doing this besides trying to look scary and intimidating, uh, you get a cookie or something. Then we get the scene of Megatron manifesting his riot cannon for the first time. Because this connects to the TV spot we got a while back where Ryan Pack seems surprised that, you know, he just did that out of nowhere. And Megatron even seems a bit surprised himself. He's right now choking Starscream, so it looks like my prediction about Megatron overthrowing Starscream will turn out correct. Starscream is like the ruler of, of this group of seekers. Then Megatron shows up, beats him up, puts him on his place, tells him to get back to the kitchen. Then Starscream develops his eternal hatred for Megatron and tries to overthrow him in every single continuity. I actually kind of like that. I think that's a really good reason to explain Starscream's obsession. And also, you can notice that Megatron has like the Decepticon insignia, the Fallen insignia or whatever it is, in his shoulder. It's not blackened or anything. It's completely normal there. Like we saw at the beginning of the trailer. I have no idea what that's all about. But anyways, in the background, we get a couple of other secret cameos. We get Dirge. I think that's his name. I, I'll be, look, I'll be honest, I never care about the clone heads. And we see a bunch of other recolor cone heads and recolor star screens. So that's kind of neat. Now, here we have the Icon 5000. Now, this is going to be cameos galore. When you see this on the movie, keep your eyes peeled because there's so many characters. Silverbolt, Mothermaster, Darren. Those are just a few of the many, many characters that get name drop and mentioned on that damn scoreboard. And Pax and D16 are kind of infiltrated the race, they're kind of running to try and, you know, win it for whatever reason, maybe to prove themselves or something like that. That's why they have the jetpacks. We kind of already knew this from the first trailer, but it's nice to have confirmation of that. There's also some black guy who... There's also some guy who's about to fall down. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I didn't mean anything racist by it. <laughs> And in the background, we have a bunch of other characters. There's this purple guy who looks huge. Not sure who that could be. Hopefully, it's sideways. I I'm not too sure myself, and honestly, there's so many characters here, it's easy to not notice people. Now, here we see Megatron, and we see his teacock turning purple. Now, when something like this happens, it usually means a couple of things. Maybe dark and a Johnson Bob or something like that. It means corruption in some continuities. This could probably be the Fallen's teacock. Like, maybe he took it for himself, and he's, like, using it. But I don't know, like, so, so the Megatron just went back to the Prime's resting place, grabbed the Fallen's Teacock and just wore it for the final battle? Seems a bit weird, you know? Also, he has the Decepticon insignia engraving him. Look at this. It's very easy to miss, but it's like almost like, you know, um, it's like burned in him. So this could be the moment where Megatron just goes full-blown evil and, you know, his spark turns purple to signify his new change in beliefs and, you know, motivations, of course. Here we see that he spawns in his riot cannon again. He's pointing at someone. Very hard to say. I'm not exactly sure who he's pointing it at. It could be Sentinel Prime, it could be Orion Pax, it could 
it could be a lot of people in all honesty. Also, I just want to point out the way that the Decepticon insignia is engraved in his chest, it almost looks like the Star Seeker logo. I'm not sure if that was intentional, if there's any relation with that, I'm just pointing it out. But speaking of branding, here we can see the Decepticon insignia being engraved into Megatron or D16. My guess is that this happens later in the movie, because, you know, this is the complete Decepticon insignia. Well, not the, like, scratch out thing that we saw earlier. And this will have to be our best look at movie Transformers 1 Megatron we have gotten so far. He has, like, the triple barrel iron cannon. He has a smaller iron cannon on his left hand. And then we know that he has, like, the giant G1 right cannon that he used against like, Starscream. So it looks like my theory about him having three riot cannons was right. So for that person who said I was wrong, HA! IN YOUR FACE! Cue the music! And then we get Megatron saying burn it down, all of it. So my guess is that he's probably talking about racing the city, like, you know, racing it to the ground, like follow Cybertron style. <laughs> so my guess is that um, that's probably why the statue got destroyed at the beginning of the trailer. This is like Megatron's Decepticons about to trash the city and destroy everything. Exactly why they're doing this, not exactly sure, but I guess we'll find out soon. Now this is a very quick and you'll miss a moment, but this happens towards the end of the movie because again, they're talking about Megatron, Megatron shooting down innocent people that are running away. So my guess is that this takes place when Megatron's, you know, full on switch sides and becomes an antagonist. He's, tr you know, he's just gonna burn down the city for whatever reason. Maybe he went mad in some type of way. But also, this is a very blinking you'll miss a moment, but here you can see my girl Moonracer, and I'm so happy to see her here. And here we have our clearest look at Optimus Prime, standing there with the Matrix of Leadership. So spoilers, yeah, they do find the Matrix. I mean, I guess we all kind of saw it coming. But again, it's not about how the journey ends, it's about the journey. And I'm not gonna lie, while this design for Optimus already got spoiled like day one because of the studio series, I still like it a lot. I still think it's a really great design for the guy. And yes, unfortunately, we hear Chris Hansworth speak and not Peter Cullen, so the rumor saying that Peter Cullen will get a voice cam in this movie seem to be wrong. It's a real shame, but I guess it is why it is. Like Chris, Chris Hansworth, in my opinion, is a really good Ryan Pax. As Optimus Prime, I think he's just okay. Um, as for Megatron, his voice actor, Brian Tyler Henry, he does a good job as D16, I actually like him as D16, but as Megatron, not so much. Now, in this scene, we can see where it appears to be Orion Pax being reconstructed. My guess is that this is the part of the movie where Orion Pax will, you know, maybe, I don't know, die or be severely injured. Kind of like what happened in Transformers G1 with War Dawn. That he got injured by Megatron, that he got rebuilt into Optimus Prime. Because we can see that he's growing out a, a new arm, a new limb. So my guess is that this is the part where he gets the Matrix or Alpha and rebuilds him. Then we got the scene right here, which honestly, this looks great. This, this could be a wallpaper where Starscream, Soundwave, and Shocker are looking upon Megatron, who has just branded himself. Because you can see the Decepticon insignia all the way at the bottom. And you can see his legions of Seekers just ready to follow him. And he openly calls them Decepticons. So this is the birth moment of the Decepticons as a faction. And in this scene, you get like this weird trailer looking thing. I'm pretty sure this is just a train from early because you can see the rails there. This is not the trailer. I'm sorry, Fate Left, your dream's not becoming true so far. But it looks like the train is like heading into battle alongside the Seekers. Yeah, there's a lot of chaos going around here and I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. And here we get our close-up look at Arachnid and her vehicle mode. Yes, Arachnid will transform into a helicopter, much like Transformers Prime, and yes, the toy did in fact lie. And also, I just love how the road for the train is forming in real time. It really gives me some War for Sabatron vibes with the way, you know, that will happen as well in the game. Also, if you pay close attention to this scene in the trailer, you can hear the G1 soundtrack playing in, in an orchestral version. Now, I love orchestral, so like this is great just hearing like the lyrics, you know, all oh, majestic and epic. It sounds great. I hope this gets released on Spotify. Next up, we got the shot of Alita 1 and Reactive fighting. Apparently, they're gonna have a bit of a rivalry going on in the movie. They're gonna have their own little fight scene towards the end. And I'm not gonna lie, some of the action here feels very babers. Like, people are being thrown into buildings, they're like destroying stuff, jumping around, the camera shaking. This definitely feels like it was directed by Michael Bay, even though he doesn't do animated movies. And you know what? I'm loving it. And here we also get a new look at Bumblebee. He does have his famous, you know, plasma cannon that we see in all throughout the Babers and other continuities. So he's gonna have two stingers and two plasma cannons. That's cool. So, okay, so this shot is very weird because when you see Optimus Prime turning around to hit Megatron, you can see that he's holding a rocket. My guess is that Starscream shot a rocket at Optimus. He grabbed it in midair and that is now using it to hit Megatron. So he sends him flying and then kicks 
Shockwave away before focusing back on Starscream who's about to ambush him. And for those of you guys who are huge Transformers fans, yes, this whole scene is a homage to the Fall of Cybertron second trailer, where Optimus fought against Starscream, Shockwave, and Megatron at the same time. And the trailer ends with our clear look at Optimus Prime, and the trailer ends with this heroic posing of Optimus Prime looking ahead as he's about to fight Megatron, or whatever it is he's about to do. And honestly, this looks great, I need to buy the Studio Series toy immediately, someone donate money! And towards the end, we had like this little small comedy bit where Bumblebee's calling out, you know, the Decepticon names, just fanboying over all of them as we see them surrounded by Seekers. And by the way, Starscream is in fact voiced by Steve Busebi, which you might be more familiar as the voice of Randolph in Monster Inc. So unfortunately, no, no Transformers animated Starscream voice, which is, it's, it's, a, it's a big shame, but you know what, it, it's fine, I, I don't mind that much. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for Trader 2. We got a bunch of cameos and stuff, in all honesty. The Trader did reveal a bunch of the plot, in all honesty, like, you know, the quest for Alpha Trion and the Primes, they finding out more or less what's going on in the surface, teaming up with the Decepticons before breaking apart, and, you know, Orion turning into Optimus, and D16 turning into Megatron. Overall, a pretty cool trailer. Uh, I don't think as much got leaked through this as I originally thought. However, this is not where the video ends or the breakdown ends, because we still have way more to talk about. Now, I did mention at the beginning that people who attended San Diego Comic Con got shown an exclusive footage, exclusive clip of Transformers 1. Well, I think they got shown two. The first one was the race on Cybertron. So it's like the Speedia 5000, you know, where we see all those cameos and the scoreboard I'm showing right now, which, you know, I'm not allowed to unblur because I don't want to get in trouble. And then we got a scene of, of Alpha Trion fighting some of the Steve Drones, which is the one we see on the trailer. So according to the people who saw the leak, they say that Alpha Trion has some Tiger Hawk level powers. Like he can actually control nature like a shaman. Now that honestly sounds insane. That sounds so cool. And they even name drop the primes. He name drops every single prime. So everyone who I mentioned at the beginning, they are in fact in the movie. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure if those clips are gonna be shown to the public. So all we have is a testimony and a few screen grabs that you can find through Reddit, Twitter, and other places. Now, interestingly enough, we also have even more new footage because an alternate version of the secretary just came out through uh, Transformers New Zealand, which, yeah, completely random, but it's nothing too big, it's for the most part, it's just the same trailer we watched with some extended scenes and some slightly alternate takes. Now, however, this extended trailer does give us a brand new look at a few other characters. For example, we got Trax here from G1. We also get an alternate take of D16 and Orion Pax, like, fist bumping, and in the background, we can see both Jazz and Ratchet. Again, there's a little Jazz in this movie. I don't know why, but I love it. And oh my god, they leaked the Steve joke! Okay, so look, I'm mean, trying not to spoil stuff throughout the trailer. Steve is in the movie. Yes, this is the Steve reference, the Steve cameo. He gets this mention here. And yeah, Steve's in the movie. So for those of you guys who called me insane to think that Steve will make a reference, a cameo in any shape, way or form in this movie, you were wrong and I was right. Play the music! Okay, so, oh my god, Hasbro and Paramount, what are you guys doing? They're leaking everything. I don't even have to leak anything, because here we get an extended shot of Orion Pax being rebuilt, and on the background, we see the Primes. We see Save the Prime, Solus Prime, and I don't know who this one is. But yeah, this is the scene where... Optimus Prime apparently is born for the first time because all the Primes are there in his presence to witness him, you know, being born for the first time. And also, this is a straight up homage to Robots in Disguise 2015, where the realm of the Primes was a place where Optimus Prime could talk to the Primes and train under them. And here we have another shot at Shockwave and Soundwave. Now, it's very hard to see, but this is Soundwave Studio Series vehicle form. And yes, he does fly. And Shockwave here, he's supposed to look a bit more like his Galactic Star Racing uh, in-game look. Which, by the way, in case you guys don't know, it's a game that's coming out later this year. It's a racing Transformers game. It's kind of funny that it took us that long to get one, you know? And then we end the trailer with an alternate version of, of that whole joke with Starscream. Instead, we see that Bumblebee's gagged and Shockwave says that he wouldn't stop talking, so they had to shut him up. Before Bumblebee breaks free and Shockwave complains some more. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of to how Shockwave is portrayed in this movie. Uh, he doesn't look like the cold, calculating, you know, Shockwave that we know, or the intimidating background presence that doesn't talk. 
here he seems almost like a joke, in all honesty. I'm not too happy about that. Also, apparently people found wind chargers, so yeah. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much about it. Like, that's all the things you could possibly miss if you weren't paying close attention to the background or certain references you probably didn't know about. Now, I will talk more about the clips from San Diego Comic Con, the ones involving Avatar and fighting the Steve drones, and of course, the racing, the, the race between, you know, Orion Pad 16 and all of Cybertron. Because there's so many background characters there, there's so many references, but I was only able to catch a few. Now, these are not confirmed, by the way, so take these with a grain of salt. But some of the confirmations I heard from people that attended the event and actually saw the scoreboard and stuff like that, they mentioned characters like Riot Gear, Clampdown, Blur, Chromia, and a few others. There's so many of them and I need to like verify which ones are legit and which ones are not legit. So tomorrow I'll make an old character video, you know, using the new knowledge that we have from Trader 2 to fill you in on all the characters because at this point we have 65 plus confirmed characters. Yes, it's a lot and I promise I'll go over it tomorrow. But yeah guys, that's it for Trailer 2. Honestly, insane. I love that it was more serious. I loved it. Bye. And Transformers 1 has been positively, unanimously, universally praised across social media from people who saw it. Yeah, so yeah, the movie is looking great. I can't wait to see it when it actually comes out. Well, I mean, I already saw it but I can't wait to see it again. I'm so excited. So many people are excited. This is probably one of those rare times where the whole fandom scene is kind of unified in saying that this movie actually looks great it looks good so i'm actually happy to see that and it's a nice change of pace especially after rise of the beast kind of disappointed everyone or at least disappointed half the fan base myself included i want you guys to tell me in the comments down below your thoughts on trailer 2 did you like it did you not like it did you notice something that i didn't is there any characters i failed to bring up let me know in the comments down below or even join our discord server where you can talk about the trailer with other people that also like transformers so if that's something that interests you just feel free to join but yeah guys that's gonna be it for this video hopefully you all enjoy i thought the wait was worth it and this trader kicked ass so yeah anyways guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe do all that annoying youtuber stuff that the algorithm don't like so much and i will see you guys in the next video stay safe guys Anyways guys, before we go, shout out to our super incredible Patreons and channel members. PrimeBear611, Mori Arty, Inferno65, Winsolope's Hightower, The Certified, James Newbold, Crowley666, Random Studios, Silverman, Legend of Soup, King Sparta, Crazy T-Rex, Super Sailor Formers Hedgehog, Xavier the God, Stage Productions, Scrub Lordo, and Predaking Hunter Plays. Also our channel members, Scrub Lordo, Optination Reviews, TF Cypher, Laser Sin, The Crazy T-Rex, and Lord Skywarp. And surprise, Cheetor. Thank you guys for your support, it's much appreciated. If you become a channel member or a patron, you get access to exclusive videos I haven't released yet. You get to collab with me in some of my videos if you so choose to, and access to channel exclusive emojis, and a bunch of other stuff. You also get a shout out to your channel in the description down below, so be sure to check out those guys, because a lot of them are up and coming YouTubers who need all the help they can get. But keep in mind this is entirely optional, because freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Thank you guys for your support is much appreciated and i'll see you all in the next video bye guys